This is yes. a, this is a donkey that I have. You know, how oldest donkey. Oh is? my gosh, <laughs> that looks classic. It is. It's it's uh when I was ten. Wow. Nine. My aunt Jenny gave it to me, and there's there's actually coins in here. When I was a kid, there's actually something else in here, like oh a, my God. Oh, piece like a little of piggy food bank. or like a piece of bread, or I have to get out of the nut or something. Like that. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> no, it's like it's petrified by this time, right? So it's like, yeah, I pulled out. I was trying to get out a couple of pennies, you know, like nineteen sixty some pennies. You know, they're wow. like those are kind of. Well, I'm gonna see if they're worth anything, but I'm just like piggy bank bobblehead. I know my my bread. mom gave this. She goes, hey, by the, she's still my my mom's eighty five, so she's still around. That's you know, great. So my dad and uh and so they they said hey we got this you want this i said yeah i'll take it so it, it's traveled everywhere with me so memories yeah, except for the military they would have smashed it so sure anyway. <laughs> i Just love that point of reference <laughs> along the way along the way oh and i was in the er all morning so that's okay we're good though oh good. well oh. you're doing good you're doing yeah. good <laughs> life is good so, <laughs> we're good yeah, so listener folks, spell worder people, we have a very special guest with us today. Returning to the podcast is Michael Bailey Smith, who you might know from other from you know movie star things, playing about the czar and shacks and all that stuff. Hi. <laughs> how you guys doing? This is Ooh, that voice. <laughs> Thank you, baby. I appreciate that. <laughs> He, he called me baby. <laughs> thank you guys. No, thanks for having me. And again, you know, it's great seeing you. You know, get Kevin and and uh, you stopped by the booth and you got an autograph and you had a shirt on or said belters over on it. I, I really did. I had it. your face I, on my body. I know. Really you've been you've been to the gym a few times. I could tell. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we're working on it. We're working on it. <laughs> but so, yeah, I'm calling you. I'm from here in Rogers, Arkansas. That's Northwest Arkansas. It's a beautiful place. Great places of food. Actually, today, me and my gal, we went to this. I know it's hard to believe. It's like trying to get seafood in Texas. Like what? You know, <laughs> it doesn't make sense, right? You would, you know. But there's good sushi here. There's a sushi house place that's freaking awesome. That's packed. When you walk in, they scream, you know, go to Baca! You know, they're screaming. <laughs> yeah. you know, in situation, it's a little hole in a wall, and they literally say, it's faster than you sit into the drive through in, in McDonald's or Wendy's. You you get down, bam, plates, this, that, bam, you're eating, eating, they pick your plate up, and the next thing you know, you're out the door. It's like, did we just eat? I don't know, but it was, it was pretty awesome. So it's a great place yeah. for your food. So yeah, good stuff. <laughs> like a wind tunnel of uh, yeah. yeah, and it's funny. That, <laughs> and it, we go, me and my fiance, we go like once a week, you know, and it's it's pretty fairly healthy for you, you know. So I go in there and just uh, do that. It's our splurge, so it's good. So, nice. Yeah. Nice. So that things are going good. Changes. Things are going very good. Yes, thank you so much. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> and got a you know I wrote this screenplay which is really yeah, awesome. How, yeah. And uh, it's going to go into production at the end of this year. The, with the writer's strike that's happening, you know, things have kind of stopped re regarding that. So um, my producer can't really, you know, we can't push this thing forward because of that, because if something happens and I'm in trouble. So um, waiting for that to get squared away, but so, so excited about it. Uh, it's called My Good Boy, and uh, it's gotten some great people have read it, you know, in the industry have really liked it a lot. So that's great. It's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know you're working on it last time, and you know things are yeah. happening. Little... Yeah, well, it's you know it's a story about a like me. I grew up, and it's hard to believe, you know, this tall, kind of skinny, gawky kid, you know, six foot four, hundred and sixty pound dude. You know, that's pretty skinny. And uh, I used to get picked up, uh, beat up, and picked up, you know, beat up and picked on all the time. And so I use sports for my way to get back and to kind of get that respect. But then when that's all taken away from you, you know, for me, when I was with the Dallas Cowboys, that's how it ended. But I made this character like happens in college and you're left with nothing. And so you're bait, you're playing football, you know, in the Detroit area <coughs> at quote, Southern Michigan, which is AKA, you know, Eastern Michigan. 
and you're left with nothing and you start bouncing out of bar and you start getting that respect back. Next thing you know, a loan shark says, Hey dude, why don't you come work for me? Next thing you know, I'm, you know, you're, you know, this character's, you know, busting heads for a loan shark. And then when you start seeing people die in front of you and guns are in your face and people want to kill you, you know, you have to wait to get out of it. So it's that whole story about redemption, um, about try, you know, um, thinking that, you know, that, you know, thinking about the, how to get uh, respect through violence, which is not the way to do that. Right. So it's all about that. Right. So it's pretty cool. Nice. Okay. I'll be quiet. Let's talk about charm, baby. Let's go. <laughs> okay. We'll talk about charm. <laughs> to, well, we're covering a comic book. This is the first comic you've ever probably seen of Charmed. And I'm very impressed by the, the art, the artistry is very fancy. The artistry. Yes. Oh, <laughs> yes. So fancy. fancy. Yes. <laughs> is that, um, is, now, now, is that your comic book? This is my comic book. Yes. You my, so you're you're the you're the brainchild. You and Mr. Sean are the brainchild of this. Well, well, no, I didn't I didn't write this. I just own it. <laughs> oh, okay. <All> no. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, these came out. Yeah, these came out a while ago. These were this was published in 2015. Wow, well, um, these are pretty cool. Yeah, they're really cool. So I'm what, excited what, to get into this with you. <laughs> what's the ad on the back of the, the back of it? It says dig it's i guess it's a tv show dig. on usa dig, okay. dig. the deeper you dig, dig it. the further you get from the truth yeah huh yeah that explains cool. a lot about what it is <laughs> i know <laughs> uh, but this issue is called what's it called <laughs> whatever happened to the demon with a soul is the yes it's a really <laughs> long one <laughs> Uh, and that's that's a reference to the old school comics, you know, the Superman. There's a uh, Superman comic like that. I forget what they're all called, but Pat Shand, the writer, was very specific about having a reference to the, those old school mm. comics. Okay. Cuckoo. Uh, Cuckoo. Yeah. Uh, and this features Balthazar very heavily, which is why I asked you to come on to join us. Thank you so much. I appreciate yeah. that. Uh, <laughs> so this was that's published February. Cool. 18, about this old voice, yeah. No, my, uh, El, my Elvis voice. Oh, Elvis voice. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. This was published February 18th, 2015, written by Pat Shand, artwork by Lisa Feliz, coloring by, by Valentino Cuomo, letters by Jim Campbell, edited by Paul Ruditas, and cover artwork by David Seidman. How do we feel about this cover? It's pretty cool. It's beauteous. <laughs> It's beauty is uh, we have the three sisters by a grave and loving memory with the leaves glowing they're wearing black um this cover was partially censored before the release though what because they didn't want to reveal cole's head there because that'd be a spoiler yeah. oh so if you compare 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 it to this volume he's not there aha uh -huh. mm -hmm. so look at that a collector's item yeah yeah but let's get into this. Oh my gosh. So what, <laughs> what what page are we going to, sir? We're starting from the beginning, page one. Okay, let me see the live page one. Let me see what this is. Oh, it's just uh, what you just read. So that, oh, okay. Cool, 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 cool. Who's reading that? <laughs> I'll go first. Um, <laughs> because we kind of start with a bang because I, some of the sections of this podcast are all on this page. <laughs> um. So I'm just going to read it quick, and then I'll go over the bonus things that are happening here. So it starts <laughs> off kind of like a montage of Cole Turner's life. So the top panel is his mother. He has a demon mother killing his father. And it says, we have a voice. It says, ever wonder how much of your life was predetermined? Then we hear, Dad! So there's a voice, and then there's Cole's voice. And then we see him looking into the mirror, and there's a Balthazar in the mirror, and a dead woman in the back. <laughs> and it says, are we bound by our destiny, by our very nature, to be who our blood begs us to be? And then we have this picture of Cole meeting Phoebe. It's like, oh, do we have a choice? Do we ever have a choice, Cole? Who's doing this to me, huh? So he's talking, and there's a voice talking to him. But this whole page is pretty much one big, you look familiar moment. <laughs> because 
that top panel is from Coyote Piper when we Phoebe get a premonition of the mother killing his father. Then we have the one here where Cole meets Phoebe for the first time in the honeymoon's over. And then there's the one where Cole tries to kill Phoebe in power outage. And then another one at the bottom where Cole marries Phoebe in a dark wedding in merry-go-round. <laughs> and we also have the power play on this page. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I know it's all in the beginning. So today's power play is energy balls. And energy balls are spheres of magical energy which resemble electrical discharges. Users can form them in the palm of their hand or throw them at targets, you know, do all that stuff. It's technically a neutral power, um, but it appears to be triggered by anger. Uh, primarily used by demons, but some witches can, because, you know, they do have this power, like the Montana family or Bianca and her mother, the Phoenix witches. Uh, they're generally blue in color, but Keats and Bite Me had red ones. And they can be deflected by reflected or strong, deflected by reflective or strong durable objects. And the power can vary by voltage and level. Uh, a low level demon would probably have to use multiple energy ball to kill uh, upper level target. Um, but an upper level demon like Belzazar would be able to vanquish a target in one hit. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> users can nearly always be vanquished by their own energy balls because they are just as powerful as they are and you can charge your energy ball into a big energy ball like charge up your power to be a giant one or you can reduce the voltage to like be stunned it's like to stun mode if like low low voltage energy balls so that's pretty cool i love, I love yeah. this dialogue here it says ever wonder how much of your life was predetermined how we are bound by destiny by our very nature to be who our blood begs us to be or do we have a choice did we ever have a choice Cole? who's doing this to me <laughs> <laughs> you want to go you can continue it's 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 oh, technically not the same okay <laughs> no one's doing anything to you Cole. I'd say no more than ever, but you know better than anyone else. You made you made a loan more than just a way of blood. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm just goofing off. Okay. Where are we going? Next page. Next page. Next page. Sean. Number Woo. So it's really cool about the first page is there's little crackies happening as we go. So when we get to the second page, which like my legs is a double spread, we get like everything <laughs> shattering all of a sudden. <laughs> so we see Cole in the middle of the shatter with like his life happening around him. And then we have uh, Balthazar talking again. Michael, would you mind taking that Balthazar line for me? Where, uh, which one is it? Uh, Where, top he, left. You made it a state of being. You made it a state of being. Where are you, Where are son you? of a bitch? <laughs> <laughs> you made it a state of being. Okay, good. <laughs> you shouldn't be asking yourself where you are. Yeah. Oh, it gives me are. chills that we actually have like Balthazar voice reading Balthazar lines. This is amazing. It's pretty amazing. <laughs> <laughs> this is my first time reading it, so we're gonna like, oh, come on. <laughs> no judgment, no judgment, <laughs> no judgment. <laughs> this is a safe you know, space. If I was in my, it was if I was in the the outfit with the with all the <laughs> prosthetics and everything like that, and the the all the painting things like they painted my head, my face, my hands, and all that good stuff, and my my black eyeballs, my ears. Yeah. How, yeah. On that's, that's on they, average. They, oh, good. Oh no, good. Oh, how on long did day, it take to get into all that? Yeah. Probably three, three and a half hours. Wow. And sometimes uh, there was one time when we finished filming. Uh, they had to turn. They had to do a turnaround. It's called a turnaround, and they normally give you twelve hours, but. They had, to, this is a quick turnaround. So I finished like close to midnight. I says, Hey, you got to be back on the set tomorrow morning at like seven in the morning and to get you out and get you back in. He goes, can you just go with the home with it on? I'm like, 
you want me to drive home <laughs> to the middle of Los Angeles as Bell Pistol. That's and, a demon. And, and they said, yeah, if you don't mind. And it was Let's dark. Yeah. So I'm driving home and I pull up, you know, and it's not, it was like June and uh, something like that. I pull up an intersection here and these like, these dudes, this low water, low water <laughs> car pulls up and it's stumping and bouncing and they go, and also that stops and all these dudes are going, hey dude, <laughs> it's not even Halloween yet, man. And I'm like, dude, that's some previous stuff, man. You know, whatever, doing that. And then, uh, yeah, it was pretty funny. So, it's so funny. It's cool. That's funny. Yeah. Then I showed up the next day in the morning, did some touch up, I was ready to rock and roll. So it was good. Boom. Yeah. Boom. Good stuff. <laughs> Uh, this page also has two more You Look Familiar moments. <laughs> There's Cole uh, in Trumped and Dangerous when you first find out that he's possessed by the source. And then Cole being vanquished. Yes. <laughs> in Centennial Charmed. Yes. So. Oh, I see it. Mm -hmm. It's so funny. When I got when I got vanquished or whatever, uh, I think it was the next, uh, I don't know, when Shax came back. Um, yeah, and then uh, I don't know if that was before or after, but I remember sitting, uh, I was dressed as shacks, you know, and it was all my shirt off, and just had sure. it draped over there. And I'm sitting there, and I was outside of the studio, and there was a basketball hoop, and I was shooting some hoops at shacks, was shooting some hoops. <laughs> That's awesome. I wish there was a video of that. <laughs> and, that would and, be um, amazing. Yeah, it's it pretty cool. But, um, <laughs> What's the, what's the gal that replaced uh, Shannon? Rose McGowan. Yeah, Rose. She's sitting there. She's in a pair of jeans. And she walks up and she goes, um, hey, uh, Michael. It's like my, it was like her first day. She goes, hi, Michael. Does my, does my, does my ass look big? And she's trying to show me her ass. I'm like, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying it. But it's fine. Right? You know, that's <laughs> Probably shouldn't be like, asking me that. That's a killer question. You yeah. Can't ask yeah it's a trap. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I agree. There's there's HR right there. You yeah. Know. <laughs> cool. I love All that. Right. There you go. Uh, but notice too, there's also a memory with Prue here that it was never shown in a comic, so that's kind of cool to note. Yeah. Yeah, but Michael, by the way, Prue is blonde in this comic. She's back in blonde. What? Just for the record. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um <laughs> So then oh. the next page. <laughs> oh, my, my dog just came in. Oh, I hear the jingles. Jingle, yeah. jingle. <laughs> you come visit. You come visit. Okay, you come in. Let's come say hi. Hi. <laughs> this is, is Miss Paige. She's hi. Come say hi. 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 Nice to meet you. Hello. <laughs> yes. Really? Oh, this is live. This is oh, wow. Okay. I already showed him your picture. Well, I don't look like that right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, back to back to the show. Sorry, we had a okay, oh, no intermission. Worries. Intermission. Yeah. <laughs> That's what happens at live when you're doing this yeah. live, baby. Right. Okay. Uh, so then it cuts to the next page, and we see in the shattered glass, Cole, Cole sees the picture, the image of Phoebe. He's like that face. I remember her. That's. And then Balthazar, Balthazar says, <laughs> "Where? I, what? what how do you, where am I supposed to be talking?" <laughs> <laughs> and it's hard to tell who's who. It's 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 pretty much all the little squiggly bubbles. That's you. The squiggly bubbles. Okay. Yeah. Oh, like, he's gone. Oh, she's gone now. That one, like the yeah. that's squiggly. Yeah. Okay. Well, then thank you. I didn't know. Normally in a script you have Balthazar say some shit. Right. Right. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, me. My mother is calling me, checking on this. I was number. I shouldn't take that in the middle of a podcast. <laughs> anyway, um, so okay, uh, she's gone now. And Cole's like, he just kind of remembers the first syllable of her name, and he's like, "Damn it, what's happening to me? I can't remember her name." <laughs> to us. Oh, so it's both of us. And then Cole says to the figure because he doesn't he doesn't know who it is yet. But he says to the figure, he's like. I know who you are, but I can't think of your name. He's like, but I'm going to fight you, whoever you are. <laughs> uh, you know, you've ever, you know, you don't know the kind of man. <laughs> the, the kind of man. Uh, 
even at your worst. Were you ever merely a man? Oh. So he's like, yeah, so Cole always had something underneath, right? So, and Cole confronts, he's like, I swear I'll. There's no need for that, Cole. There's no, there, there, there's no need for that, Cole. Not anymore. Your fight. Our fight. And then on the next page, we get the big re reveal. It's Belthazar. You're here. Michael Bailey Smith is here in his makeup with his ears. <laughs> it's over. Yeah. <laughs> it's over. You know, I still have that jacket. That's oh, amazing. Nice. I have that jacket. Yeah. This is a pretty iconic image. You know, it's very stark. Yeah. It's, it's funny because the, the jacket it's... itself, like, uh, it fits over the button. So there's no buttons or reveal. It's pretty cool. And it's oh. long too. It's kind of oh. long. Now. Yeah, it's long. Very nice. Yeah. yeah. What is it like to see your character immortalized here in drawing form? That's cool. No, it's it's badass. I I love that. That's cool. I'm gonna. You have yeah, an image that's... now. Now you can like print it out and put it on your wall. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like uh, uh, where where uh, the it's over is kind of like this nice succinct little bit of dialogue. Uh, very uh, poignant compared to like yeah. Shaq's where he says, the end, you know, or <laughs> no one crosses me, you know, things yeah. like that. So yeah, I like that. That's cool. Good stuff. Yeah. yeah. He, he, he needs his, he needs his uh, pants hemmed a little bit. They're a little baggy at the bottom, but. <laughs> oh, you're right. <laughs> no, and that's, how it was. that's how it was in real life. That looks good. Yeah. That's good. That's very cool. They captured it. Yeah, yeah. There's not a lot of tailors in hell, unfortunately. He couldn't get it done. That's true. That's true. <laughs> We're going to the next, the next slide? Yeah, so the next page then is... Six. So we're cut back to where we were, the graveyard, right, before, right when Cole got stabbed. And they come up to him. Uh, and Valen is over Cole's body. He's like, you see... That's this is the greatest demon of all time, the former source himself, dead at my feet. Mwahaha. Ha, ha. Uh, <laughs> and so then he grabs the Athame out of uh, Cole's body, and he's like, "I'm gonna get you." But then Coop's like, "Oh no!" Uh, <laughs> so Coop is gonna try to stop him. Paige and Phoebe and Piper start running. Piper blasts Valen away. She does like an explode, but he doesn't explode. He just kind of get blast, gets blasted. Uh, Paige orbs to Adel, to, and aids to, Adel, aids to Adel's aid. Orbs to Adel's aid. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, that then, yeah, right. Tongue twisters. Yeah. And then Phoebe goes to Coop, and she's like, I thought you were. And he's like, no, I'm fine. But Cole, he saved my life. <gasps> <gasps> Beautiful. And then we see on our next page, we have Phoebe kind of comforting Coop. And then Paige is next to Adel. And Adel's like, I feel like a demon went all drumline on my face with a shalele, but I'm okay. <laughs> looks like drummer boy's back in business too. And Paige looks up just in time to see uh, Valen shooting her with the shalele. And she's like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> and then Valen is like, so this is what it feels like going head to head with the most powerful bitches on the planet. I don't get into this for the rush, but I gotta say, it feels pretty damn good watching you panic. And then we see, is that Paige already on her feet again? Yeah. Yeah. Paige is yeah. like, oh yeah, well, how's this feel? And she is standing in front of Adel and she's, um, what do we call it? Blorbing? No, not Blorbing. Blurble. <laughs> Blurbles. She's blurbling the uh, ancient Athame <laughs> and pointing it at Valen, and Valen's like, "What?" Like yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Whatever. It is. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so the next page, we see Valen, and he goes, "Ha!" And he dodges, and the Athame just flies past him. 
and then he uses his shillelagh and does like Green Lantern style, like grabs it, like with some kind of energy beam, and he's like, "Ha ha, slow down for me, will you?" And he's he then he grabs the Athame himself. He's like, "This feels pretty good, but not nearly as delicious as what, as what comes next." And then Piper goes she's like the depowering spell now. <laughs> Uh-oh. This is exciting. Next page. I have to know. So we rhyme have time. our first uh, rhyme time. So we have Paige say, "He who bears the ancient blade, we bid his stolen power fade." Short but simple. No, there's it, it continues. Works. There's more. There's more. Oh yeah. They, they, they and then we too. yeah. Uh-oh. We see Valen in this very like Ursula moment where he's basically like so much for true love, Phoebe, <laughs> as he's running. Uh, he wants to kill Coop. And then Piper continues, return to ash and magic drain from this lesser demon's veins. And he's about to stab Phoebe and he's saying, die. And Phoebe finishes and says, the power of three releases thee. Next page. And the next page, the power of three will set you free. So that's the end of it. You combine all those, that's the full spell. And that causes Valen's shillelagh to crack and smash apart into ouch sparkly dust <laughs> sparkly glitter <laughs> he's like oh haha clever but then because he's holding the athame and he no longer has the power to hold the athame and uh use it it starts to suck up his soul he's like oh wait ah it's like so this is what it feels like <laughs> and then the next phase so what's a little disturbing about this, Michael, is in a previous comic, there was a leprechaun <laughs> who would polish a shillelagh and it turned into yeah. a whole masturbation joke because <laughs> he talked about yeah. how he got in a good rhythm polishing his shillelagh. So Val and shillelagh getting exploded right here. That's his manhood. Like, that's <laughs> ouch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <We're shillelagh>. Yep. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> next, next, so, slide next page. Yeah, next yeah. page. We see uh, Phoebe is at Cole's side, um, watching him basically slowly die. And then Valen continues. It feels like this is what it feels like to win. And then he splodies in a crush of blue light. And then Phoebe back with Cole says, Cole, can you hear me? I'm here. Why do you think he says. This is what it feels like to win. Why do you think he feels like he's won? Huh. Is it because he got to at least kill one magical being? Is that why? He took Cole away from the Charmed Ones? Yeah, I'm thinking because he sees how distraught Phoebe is over this, he feels like that's ruined the Charmed Ones. And so even though he's dying, he's done some kind of impact on them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Interesting. All right. So now we get back to some Belthazor stuff. Ooh. Yes. <laughs> All right. I'm here, Cole. Be- I've always been here. Go- you're gone. I defeated you. You're not a part of me anymore. Stop. And listen. Ooh. So it's Ooh. so cool to see the two of them kind of like go head to head here. Love the uh, look at the shadows. How yes, whole exactly. shadow is Belthazor, and Belthazor shadows Colt. I know. What, yeah, yeah, I love what that. A very cool. Yeah, it shows that they each are like the shadow of each other. They're always kind of part of each other. I love that. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. It's cool. I like that shot in the top there. Mm-hmm. Really close above the eyes. eyes. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. I don't like my blood coming out of my mouth. I don't know about that part. <laughs> it's like, that's not cool. That's not part of the script. <laughs> I need that blood. <laughs> Nobody make me use my own blood. <laughs> Do you remember the, uh, the part in the, where the, the charmed ones, they take a chunk out of me? Uh-huh. The yeah. Belzer flesh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So that, you know, because they're going to use that later for Pope to yeah. push me. <clears throat> but there's a part where... Uh, you know, I don't, I take their powers away. And that's when the other demon comes in me, you know, and then I, no one crosses me, like whatever, I, I get rid of him. And I think it's uh crew, she goes and flings me through the window. Mm-hmm. So, and so in the 
so I'm the actor. Then I had a stunt guy named Tim Sitaris. His name was Bubba. Um, <laughs> well-known guy. He's been in tons and tons of movies. He's doubled me in a lot of stuff. And uh, he was the guy that did all like the ratchets, all the craziness. Because I'm not going to yeah. get ratcheted out of a window. So when Cruz like doing the whole tossing thing, it's me getting ratcheted out. Well, it's him. So what happens sometimes, those ratchets fail. Oh. This is why they have stunt guys and not actors. Yeah. So the window, had the seal of it started probably like this high, right? And there was the window up here. So you had to lift him up and then out this way. First time went, it went straight across and smashed his head on this oh. eye. I'm just, we're talking ratchet speed, bam, like that. And got concussion. I mean, he was pretty, oh gosh. he was out of it. I mean, he was, but he, you know, he's a, he's a tough guy. He's like me. We both played football and uh, in college and stuff like that. And so, but he was a tough guy. And I'm thinking, thank goodness that was you and not me. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. That just sure. remind me of like this, the fighting and things like that. Yeah. So. No, it's cool. I love giving the stories. That's always a really yeah. cool part of having you on. Do you, do you remember the, uh, what was the episode where there was a, like a Belthazor, but like a, uh, with Black as Cole. Yeah. With yeah, Sykes. No. Yeah. <clears throat> so that one, they hired a stunt guy to play that character. And I don't think he was trained in, in stunt fighting. So the part where we're fighting, we're fighting and I get thrown on the table and he gets on top of me. He puts me in a real chokehold. We're talking part of his forearm across my throat and he's crushing like this. I'm into the part and he was pulling up and I thought he was going to freaking take my head off. I have never in my whole entire 30 years of acting have ever called cut me personally called cut. Yeah. I called, I had to say cut stop like that. Cause my, I and I'm a pretty tough dude. Listen, I, I have a scar from here to here on my arm um, where I, I was, it was a movie called chain letter. And uh, I played the lead bad guy in it. Uh, and uh, it was right after the Hills have eyes. Yeah. And, and so I did this movie and first take of the movie, I had to pick a guy up. I was supposed to use both hands to throw him in. And they want me to actually pick him up. And like, they were, but I said, oh, listen, I could toss this guy. He, he was only like 180 pounds or something. I could pick up and throw him. Not a big deal. But I got froggy or kind of cocky. And I grabbed one arm and picked him up and snapped my bicep off. And my, oh, shoulder, wow. and my bicep went up into my shoulder. This is the first day of filming. And they just paid me a whole crap load of money to come and do this film up front. And so I, I said, well, I'm not, I didn't tell anybody. So, I mean, the stunt coordinator saw what happened. I could go through anything like that and I'm not going to be a baby. And I've been through a lot of stuff. Like when I fought Von Damme, I had my nose broken. I had my head sliced <laughs> open. I've been, you know, Gary and Prince, seen dead people in the hallway. I mean, I've been kicked in the, you know, what's a billion times and never complained about anything. When that dude on Charm got me in that chokehold, that was only all the time that I freaking it. I went cut. Yeah. And I went to the stunt coordinator, and his name's Nuno Sardi. Uh, Nuno Sardi, Nuno, yeah. Yeah. And I yeah. said to him, I said, dude, I don't know who this guy is. I said, I, but he needs to freaking chill, man. If he really wants to go at it, we can go at it. But I'm, yeah, you know, I'm on the top of a table and get on top of me and choke the crap out of me. No, that's not <laughs> happening. So I got pretty jacked. So that was not. Yeah. Happening. Anyway, I could, imagine. I could imagine. Wow. Okay, back to this. Back to our story. It's Meanwhile. more Balthazar conversation. Yes. <laughs> all right, we're going to the next page. Yep. It's yeah. all you. <laughs> oh, there's more Balthazar. You were never supposed to exist. A half man, half demon who become the most powerful evil in the world. You, we were remarkable history. No, we were remarkable. Like, uh, let we were remarkable, legendary. Oh, chills. <laughs> yeah, I guess is I that what I am? Louder. Evil. Yeah. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> I let, let, let me start this over. Me... Yeah. Okay. You were never supposed to exist. A half half human. Half demon who become the most powerful evil in the world. You. We. We were remarkable. 
legendary. Is that what I am? Evil? It's what you were. Do you know where you, do you know where you are, Cole? We're in the void. Oh, oh that's me. Is that still me? Yeah, you can't yeah, supposed to do it together at the same time. Okay. Yeah. Ready? One, two, three. We're in the void. We're in the void. I don't know how I know this. Yes. I'm everything. <laughs> I'm everything slipping away. I feel like I'm disappearing. You vanquished me, the demon within you, creating a space, a space outside of body and soul, a space that demands to be filled. What are you saying? Nothing truly dies, Cole. Not until now. A piece of my consciousness was left behind in the void. Oh, so much. Okay. You, too, can live here forever, never succumbing to breath, to death. All you must do is embrace me, become, become one with me again. Oof. You can do it. <laughs> you I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you got a little carried away there. Didn't mean to do that. <laughs> Let's <laughs> right. it's getting intense in this brain. In Overacting. This yeah. <laughs> no, it's great. It's amazing. <laughs> I, I, that, that was a fun character. I mean, uh, this it was a fun character to do. Uh, just everything about it, and it's so funny that that character, or just charmed in general. I mean, it's it's worldwide. I mean, I have fans and from all over. You know. Yeah from Algeria to France, to Germany, to England. I remember when I went to uh, England uh, with, who who came with me? It was me, the detective, I forgot his name. Oh, Dorian Gregory. Yeah, Dorian he, Gregory. He, he, yeah, it was, <laughs> him, it was Dorian, me, uh, and it was... Uh, I met him recently, he, he talked about you. He was very excited. When I told them. Yeah, he's he's a good dude. So yeah. he and I did a panel together, but uh it's so funny the passion that people have fans. And it's and it's one of these things that, you know, no matter how life can be crappy around you and things like that, or how tough, you know, your day is, you know, I like what was it? It was something just recently, um oh, me and my fiance were looking at houses. And we went and walked into the house. There was this house we were looking at, and there were one there was two realtors. One was a guy, young, but like your age, you know. And uh, he was in there, and he's going, "You look familiar. Um, you know, how do I, how do I know you?" And I said, "I, you know, I don't know." And of course, my fiance goes, "Well, he was an actor in Hollywood, you know, for like thirty years." <laughs> oh yeah, you, you. I'm like, and I'm like, you know, she, she's like my my best uh, agent, you know, yeah. like, uh, and he says, Oh my gosh, you're Balthazar. I love that. I love charmed. And I like this. And then when we had our, uh, when I proposed to her, um, we had a, uh, we had a big party after and all of our friends and one of my friends invited a, um, uh, what do you call it? A bartender, uh, to come. And, uh, he bartended and, uh, he was a huge charm fan. Huge. He was yeah. huge. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he was like, oh my God. So he, cool. I'd have to introduce him. You built the sore. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. but, but it's, I think it's because I'm like, especially like people recognize from the hills have eyes. I'm like, wait a minute. It's like, is that a, is that a compliment? <laughs> or not? But, you know, I've done enough things, you know, without it. It's kind of, you know, my face yeah. and those characters are kind of, you know, whatever. So, yeah, it's kind of cool. Yeah. It's, it's definitely, you know, um, no matter how your uh, day goes, sometimes it's it's nice when people recognize your work. Funny thing, like the other day, uh, her and I were dropping a car off for one of her friends. We dropped it out in the, the woods. That's like this this guy Joe's shop. Like he's you know he started his own thing. It's his garage out in the woods. I thought I was going to the deliverance area, 
so I can start hearing banjos and stuff. But um, uh, and we uh, her friend called her and says, "Hey, the 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 uh, um, the mechanic thought you were a movie star." You know, meaning her, you know, because she's <laughs> a beautiful lady. And I'm like, yeah. so cool. And then all of a sudden she, she she said, well, she's not, but her fiance is, you know, which I'm not. <laughs> but I thought, you know, thought it was kind of cool. Yeah. Oh, good stuff. It's super cool. It's super a cool. blessing, man. It is. Yeah. You guys you, like yeah. thought about me to have me on this show. I and always like, think about you because <laughs> it's like, you're amazing, you know, so. I get to play Beltasaur again. I'm really excited <laughs> about that. I'm just like, <laughs> all, good stuff. all right but that was a yeah so, so then the next page we kind of see the memories of cole's memories that were all around him kind of like melting it's like a big watercolor <coughs> yeah period mm -hmm. and we hear you know cole cole can you hear me uh is that is that you and then um uh, Balthazar says, "Oh, I, gosh, really? I know you're not on there, but he says, okay, who are you talking to? Let's, let's start over. Okay, but says, uh, Michael, would you Cole. please get back your head back in the script? <laughs> okay, Cole, Cole, can you hear me? Is that who are you talking to? Is that you? And what's very telling about this page is there's only two memories that are left." It's the first time that Cole met Phoebe and the last image of Phoebe that he saw before he found oh. class. You know, it, look at some of, yeah, but look at some of those melted images in the back. It looks like faces, especially on oh, the left. Yeah. yeah. Wow. There's like, there's oh, like, yeah. Under, like, yeah, there's some look, look like some faces. Anyway, it looks kind of creepy. Very creepy. On the left, just over Phoebe's head. It looks like balls. It looks like there's balls right there. <laughs> really? You had to go there for the balls? Like, yeah. Sure. <laughs> what can I say? Low-hanging fruit. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Literally. <laughs> All right. Before I get yeah, in too much trouble. <laughs> yeah. Next, next page. Next page. Next page. So we see Cole, and he's going, Phoebe? That's not possible. Every moment, every moment you, uh, every moment you fail to join with me, the void within you collapses along with your memories. It's like you said. There's a reason I'm legendary. I defy destiny. I will join with me, or you will die. <laughs> well, then I'm tired of living between life and death. I'm through. I'm finished. No. Besides, well, he, he says that while he's falling over. Yeah, right. Yeah. No. Besides, <laughs> I mean, it's it's all within his mind or something, so it's all kind of floaty anyway. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> cool. um, oh, next page. Hold up. Sorry. Next page. Up yeah. the... Sure. Yeah. Slide. Okay, here we go. Next one. Those. I'm gone. What the hell? Okay. I know. So now we're back in the real world. We're in the physical world. And Phoebe is like, no, please. And Cole's like kind of mustering some words. It's like, I've got to see if Phoebe is okay. And then Phoebe makes this really creepy smile. I don't like it. It's very insulting. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, ee! I'm like, no, please stop. Um. <laughs> yeah. Your breath stinks in, uh, you know, we're on TV and, you know, I, I did a, uh, thank goodness for me, I did a movie where it was uh, called Miracle Desert. And literally, we were this far from each other. We're both buried in the sand, head to head, and he was this far. And uh, uh, J.R. Bourne was the other actor. And I was, before we met, I said, I hope to God, first of all, my breath doesn't stink. But neither, you know, his too. But it didn't. We we both smell good. So good. Yeah. Good. I, was, I, spent, I spent two days in a hole staring at this dude from this far away. So yeah. Pretty crazy. There you, there you go. And we didn't kiss once, which is really fortunate for me. Thank you. <laughs> it's funny. It's, it's funny. You know, people you know, uh you know, uh I was telling somebody I said, you know, I can I can I am I am uh I am not gay. Um and the reason why I know this is because <laughs> I was 
doing a vampire movie called Bloodshot. And I reached over, had to bite this guy in the neck. And I got done and go, that does not taste good. I'm, I'm, no. <laughs> <laughs> like, Which, no. All right, I'm out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but at least you tried it. <laughs> I did. I bit his neck. If, it was, if it was a girl's neck, sweaty, it had been good, but just not the, the that's just, you know, just do his own, right? So. <laughs> So it's pretty cool. Very cool. <laughs> got to make fun of this stuff, right? So I got to. Exactly. Yeah, take this oh, yeah. Serious. <laughs> so we're still on this page. So uh, Phoebe is holding Cole and he's like, she's like, I'm okay, Cole. You saved Coop, you. And then Coop is sitting there like, oh, yeah, I'm watching too because he's a cool guy. <laughs> 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 and then um, Phoebe says, oh, and Cole says, good, everything's okay. So he sees Phoebe's face and he smiles and he's comforted by that. Aww. <gasps> and then it continues on the next page as Cole is um, evaporating, disapparating, yeah. turning into energy. And uh, Phoebe's like, Cole, and she's trying to hold on to him, but then he's gone. And we what? see Adel with Piper and Paige, and they join up with Coop and Phoebe, and we get this beautiful silhouette of them all walking away as they've just lost Cole. They've been defeated. Yeah. Yeah, Cole's officially dead. His soul has been eradicated Oof. from existence completely. Uh, what, really? So he's, oh my gosh. Does he ever come <laughs> back? Come on, no. dude. This is like, this is it. Oh, I'm so destroyed right now. It's very sad. But maybe you'll yeah. soon come back. Yeah, <laughs> yeah maybe. <laughs> Never know. <laughs> so the next page, we cut to the Nexus of the Awe. This is the castle that Prue is currently living in. Uh, she is kind of the guardian of all magic right now. It's <coughs> crazy. Uh, but they orb there, and then they say, are we sure we're up for this? It's like, no, but we have to. No matter what, she's still our sister. And then inside, we see Prue looking at her tattoos. She's talking to her tattoos. She's like, come on, are you trying to, to communicate with me? I'm right here. I'm not going anywhere. And then we hear the knock, knock, knock on the door. And she thinks it's Cole. She goes to answer it. She's like, she's like I know you. Like, this is technically my place, but you live here too. You don't have to knock. And then she sees her sisters and Coop there. And she's that like, That looks like oh. Cole, though. That guy looks like it, He does look a little it like does, yeah. yeah. Coop and Cole are very kind of very similar, especially in the comic. <laughs> yeah. Um, but they tell her, she's like, Prue, we have some bad news because Cole, because Prue does not know Cole's fate right now. Oh. Oof. Oof. All right. Next up, uh, we continue the scene. <clears throat> And we see uh, Pipe, or Phoebe is on the couch with Paige. And she's like, I can't be here right now, Paige. It's bad enough as it is. But with what just happened, it's killing me. And Paige says, Piper was right. We had to come here to tell her. We'll be out as soon as we can. And then we see them continue. And Phoebe's like, I don't know if I can take it much longer. And Paige says, me either. And then Phoebe says, we really have to figure this out. Prue's noticed that we, and then Paige says, Shh, they're coming out now. And then Prue is holding the kind of destroyed ancient Athame. And she says, this is it, huh? The weapon that killed him? And Piper says, yes. And she says, maybe we can do a spell. Use the power of the blade to bring him back. We've done it before, this. And Piper says, this is different. Cole's soul was destroyed. I'm so sorry, Prue. I should... And then Prue says, Piper, please. I need you guys. Phoebe needs to be with all of us. Don't go. And Piper says, it's going to be okay. We just have some things to take care of. And Prue's like, yeah, okay. So this is like so our we... first look that Prue's going through some shit. And she's she needs somebody with her. Right. What's, the, you can... what's that thing in her arm? It says, stay away from her. So... Yeah. Her tattoos oh. are giving her messages. And so I did not notice that. Because there's two secret messages in here that her... 
her tattoos are kind of like prophesizing it says stay away from her whatever that means mm. um and then the next page is gonna be another uh tattoo <clears throat> but we're, we're starting to get the sense that something is strange with the sisters they don't like being here they feel awkward being here we don't understand why that is but we get a, the impression that it's she happening who sees will rise see who sees she who sees will rise. Yeah, fast read time, totally. <laughs> yeah. Switches to, yeah, that's pretty cool. Okay, I like yeah. that. So the next page, yeah, Michael's looking ahead a little bit. He's Sorry. reading the arm. <laughs> He's reading the arm, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> so Pepper's like, all right, everyone, let's go. Um, but before they do, Prue hugs Coop. And he says, Coop says, Prue, I can't begin to express how. And she just says, I'm glad you're alive, Coop. That's why Cole, you know, so they're talking about Cole saved him for a reason and she hugs him. It's a nice little moment. Then they orb away. Um, Piper says, we'll never be too far away, Prue, and they orb. And then Prue says, you're always too far away. And this is when we see on her arm, see, she who sees will rise. (laughs) Hmm. I don't know what that means. Who is she who sees? That could be Prue, it could be Phoebe, it could be a seer somewhere. I don't know. Mm. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Indeed. And Kevin is um, lying because he does know. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't have all the memories, though. So I know things, but I don't know exactly how it plays out. So maybe I don't. Okay. Okay. <laughs> we'll see. <clears throat> so back at the manor. Nurk. We see, is this Leo? Yeah, it's Leo. <laughs> okay, so Leo and Piper having a glass of wine together, and they say, to Cole, and they do a little salute. And then Paige is in bed with uh, someone who might be Henry, <laughs> and she says, I love you. <laughs> and he says, sure, sure. Shirk. <laughs> shirk. shirk. <laughs> He's sleeping. Yeah. Yeah. Snoring. Little snark. <laughs> oh, wait, that's a snark snark. That's an N, but still snark snark. Oh. It's like it's like snark from um uh Thundercats. Snark snark. Yeah, yeah. I think that's the just the writing version. What's it called? When they write it out? Oh really? Yeah. I don't know. Whatever. And then we see uh, Coop with Phoebe, and he says, it's it's okay for you to be sad. I know you love me, but I know what he meant to you. That means something. And she's like, you're talking like a Cupid. And he's like, dumb bitch, I am a Cupid. And then they lay down together, and he says, good night. And she says, good night. But something is keeping Coop up. He sits up in the bed. I wonder what it could be. How about a horse? Yeah. It's carbs, right? Right. Right. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> but think of that. The parallel from last issue. If he was awake. Yes. Oh. Ooh. So we're on the final page here. Uh-oh. Coop gets out of bed. He leaves the manor. He gets a little deep, deep, deep from his phone. And he answers it. And it says, Prue. And she says, I know something's going on with my sisters. But it is, isn't about this. It's about Cole. He saved your life, and I can't believe I'm saying this, but in his own way, he saved mine too. We owe him. And then Coop's like, I couldn't agree more. <coughs> so then tells Coop that she slipped something in his pocket when she hugged him. Um, and she says, Cole and I had an argument about this, and I still don't agree with him, and my sisters wouldn't be okay with it either. But this isn't about what I think is right. It's about something bigger. And Coop takes this glowy orb out of his pocket. And this is Cole's father's soul. Benjamin mm-hmm. Turner. Oh. Yes. Next. The end. Political. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So what do we think about this issue? Are you talking to me? Yeah, sure. Oh, you can, be, you can go. Or, 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 I you can go. I think it's cool. I love the uh, the artistry. I love the, the thing about uh, yeah, Cole looks badass. So, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, it's good. It's good. 
Um, nice. I'm sad that he's uh, they killed Koloff. What the hell? Yeah. So, <laughs> but maybe he'll come back. Yeah, I don't know. Again. We'll see. I don't know. This this yeah, I mean, this one seems permanent, but who knows? You know, you never know with Charmed. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, That's true. <laughs> <laughs> but I know when they killed me off the show, he was permanent. So there you go. <laughs> but he came but, back in the comic books. So. Yeah, yeah you got to come back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty funny. Good. Cool. All right, John. Um, what I really liked about it, it, it reminds me of when Wolverine, quote unquote, died. And Mystique tried to bring his soul back and like his soul came to the precipice and she didn't see it. And so like she shut the portal and he didn't come back. So I like that this is similar to where like there was a way that he could have come back. So it kind of teases us. And then Cole got to be the better person and say, no, I don't want to come back as a demon. I want to, I just want to die. Like I want to give Phoebe her happiness and just leave. Cause if I come back as Belteszar, I'm just going to cause more chaos for the charmed ones. So I love this. Mm -hmm. And it begs the question, if any of this was even true at all, this might have just been like dying, you know, whatever in his brain, you know, but it's still good mm -hmm. that he still has something to fight for, even in his last moments of death. Mm -hmm. And I think it's pretty amazing, too, that we actually get to see Belthazor and Cole go head to head, because I feel like this is something that probably happened over the course of their entire existence, living together. You know, this little these little mind discussions is probably something that happened a lot, and it, mm. I think it would have been cool to see in the series. You know, have scenes like that. Hmm. I'm trying to think about that during the actual actual uh, series and yeah, what we did because hmm. you're you you were never on screen together at the same time. You're always you know switching between yeah yeah only time so, we were was i played a different character right so right 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 like grimlocks or whatever mm -hmm. so, yeah it's crazy though but i think it's also really impactful because it represents everyone who struggles with their inner demons it's all about people who are struggling with their own inner battle which i think is really powerful too yeah um and I think it's really powerful at the end with Prue, because this is huge for Prue. She really vehemently disagreed with bringing Cole's father back to life. But now that he's gone, because Prue and Cole have bonded over this time together, they have formed some kind of close relationship. And she is going to go to Coop, who she believes feels indebted to Cole, who feels maybe like he wants to do something for him because she knows she won't do it herself. Her, she's morally against it, but she thinks Coop will do it. And he's, and she's willing to do that. Let him go ahead and make it happen. Mm -hmm. So that's cool too. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I think this is another really good issue going forward. It's, it's lots of personal allegories, lots of good love letters to Cole's character, his final swan song. Um, the badass we have Balthazar here is too. I think this is a range of emotion that he's a demon doesn't get to show very often. <laughs> yeah. I think you have a lot of dialogue in here. And I, I think Balthazar is trying to probably fight for his own existence too. Exactly. Right. So. Yeah. So. Yeah. Especially in some of that dialogue that he had, you know. So. Mm -hmm. No, it's good stuff. Yeah. Good. And I, I didn't even know this 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 comic existed. This is kind of cool. <laughs> yeah, it's a whole like two seasons of comics after the show ended. It's pretty wow. amazing. Yeah. yeah. Um. Anything for canonical? I'm just gonna jump right to the chase. <laughs> There's not much in here except for the soul ball glowing green, which is not accurate to me. I think it maybe looks green in one shot of the show. Um, and then pages, watery orbs. Those are the only things that I don't like. <laughs> hmm. It's funny. My fiance's name is Paige. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> How fun. <laughs> and no, she doesn't want me to pretend to be Belthazor. So don't. <laughs> <laughs> Awkward. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so. Can you be Belthazor 
tonight? <laughs> sure. <laughs> like it, take, it takes way too long to get into the face paint. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, <laughs> next is tips for future white lighters. What do we think the moral of the story is? You talking to me? I have no idea. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> I have one. Jashan, do you have one? Not really. I forgot. I always forget that part. So you go. <laughs> All right. I'll give you mine. Okay. So <laughs> my tip is inner turmoil <laughs> and psychological weakness is normal. And it's okay to admit it. Um, there's always someone to help you, even when you fear you can't help yourself. So you just have to find the strength to but tell the right people that you're struggling. That will help you. Mm. Nice. There you go. <laughs> That's good. That's just good uh, life lesson in general. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Next is, ooh, onomatopoeia. <laughs> so this is our this is our our chosen sound word. So our... <laughs> what's your Sean's John's laughing? <laughs> you guys like you uh... been drinking before you started this or what? <laughs> Sometimes smoking. <laughs> um, I, I see. I, I see like... you me as a belt of Zorro. Go ahead. Cool. Good. Good. <laughs> um, I like coom. I don't think we've seen coom before. This coom sound. Yeah, it's like a <laughs> like a hefty coom, like a bellow. Coom. <laughs> <laughs> what in the last episode? I like that zerk. When they were laying in bed, the dude was making. Oh yeah, the, the snoring. Oh, yeah, <laughs> snort, snort. <laughs> it sounds like Swedish. <laughs> yeah. Let's go to Ikea after this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, mine is Kush. I don't know. Kush. Kush. <laughs> All right. Most valuable panel. Um, the one I love, I think it's gorgeous, I think it's brilliant, is the one where Cole is standing within his memories as they're melting. That just says so much, and it's such a pretty way to show that idea, so I love it. Nice. I like the uh, GQ uh, panel um, with Belzer. Yeah. It's over. It's over. It's It's really pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> I also like the, there's another one too. I'm trying to find it. Uh, let me find it. I thought it was here. Where find it? Uh, I can't find it. Anyway. I don't know. Somewhere, somewhere in there. Oh, right there. The, uh, the one where he's fighting Cole. I like that. Oh, yeah. I love the, the, how they switched the little, Kind of a cool hidden gem there with uh, Cole's shadow is Belthazor and Belthazor's shadow is Cole. I like that. That's fun. Yeah, very mm -hmm. poetic. Yeah. Um, my most valuable panel is the one where Baby and Cole are looking at each other and Cole says, good. Because it feels like he can leave this world and it, he feels accomplished. As long as Baby is okay, he's content. With where he's and leaving things. So that's pretty powerful. Uh, okay, sexiest drawing. <laughs> my sexiest is the my sexiest is that that full body Star picture. It's just it's too good. It's too awesome. Thank yeah. you. Very much. <laughs> Mine as well. Thank you. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's awkward because you know Mr. Michael Bailey Smith is right here, but this this uh, Belthazar image, this is a fuck me, daddy Satan moment. <laughs> like we got it's it going on with Belthazar right here. It's the one. <laughs> <laughs> now, I heard, I heard. Uh, I went to a movie theater. I was in, it was in Texas. Went to a movie theater. Uh, it was like the middle of the afternoon on a Saturday. I wanted to go. I forgot what I wanted to go see. I wanted to go see Top Gun, and I went by myself. Just wanted to go. And right when I walked in, the guy behind me 
it was a place where you could order drinks and things like that. Right. So guys, like, he's like, I pulled up and I said, I'm gonna have a, a beer. It was right after my uh, divorce and whatever. So I remember um, just trying to figure out my own way, you know, now I'm single and things like that. And set the bar and the guy looks at me and goes, Oh my gosh, you're Belthazor. <laughs> so he was in the, <laughs> He, he was gay and he's like he's like going you know i have to tell you he goes you have the hugest gay following i'm like really i said yeah he goes there's so many people have like fantasized about being with Belthazor. i'm like okay okay <laughs> like, i'll take that and yeah, i'll and be it, on my way <laughs> you know, when i saw this shot you know that guy would love the shot right <laughs> tell him to read the comic books. Tell him to listen to Words of the Witches. Then he'll be like, oh, yep. yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Then the guy goes, uh, the guy goes, I said, he goes, uh, he goes, but I can, uh, you're, I can tell you're not gay. I said, yeah. I said, I appreciate it, though. And he goes, well, you know, my middle name is Flipper. I'm like, what? Flipper? Yeah, I flip straight guys to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> that was his line to pick me up. I'm like, you know, you guys do a lot better than that. Oh man, yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, but no, I I like this shot. It just stopped me. I mean, I thought of that. Uh, you know, I went to the movie, so it's kind of cool. So I appreciate that's that. Though. I appreciate that's great. So yeah, it probably made that guy's day too, right? So it yeah, did. Yeah. So, yeah. And that's what's great. Yeah. About. When you put a smile on guy's face or some gal's face or whatever it is, and just you meet them, and oh my gosh, you're cool, you whatever, you high five them, whatever. It's like, you know, it's 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 such a blessing. It is so for sure. Yeah, yeah. You know yeah. that that doing that role. I mean, I when I first got that, like I think I was telling you, uh, Sean, it was a, uh, um, uh, you know, I did that. Janor role, you know, I co-star oh, yeah, yeah. on that, and and when I was doing that, you know, I had the director, I had the first AD, the assistant director, come up to me and he says, "The director just told me something." I said, "I want to relay this information to you," and he said, oh, "He said okay." I said, "Okay." And he goes, "He thinks you're one of probably the one of the most talented actors he's worked with in the last few years." I said. Really? I said, he must have been really hurting, you know, you know, you know, but I said, well, I take that as a compliment. Thank you. You know, I said, wow. And I said, okay. And he goes, no, you're doing a really great job. And I said, okay, thanks. I appreciate it. And, you know, I had the producer come up to me and, and, uh, say the same thing. And, uh, I, you know, and you get these compliments sometimes when you do good work, you know, and sometimes you don't you just do good work and you just go home. Um, uh, but it was, it's always nice to hear. And, uh, when I got to my trailer, uh, I got a call from my manager and she goes, Hey, they want you back. And I said, okay, cool. I said, but wait a minute. I general gets killed. You know, he gets, uh, and they said, no, they want you back with some other character and named Belthazor. They hired some other guy and, uh, and he's not working out. They want to replace him with you. And, uh, they said, okay. So they went back and reshot. So I next, like the next week I showed up and we shot the, the parts where this guy was in that episode and, and then I did it and just carried it on. So it was yeah, such a blessing, you know, get stuff like that. Yeah, and he then, had a pretty long life. Yeah. It's our character. Yeah. Look at the right behind you is the, the belt is or, you yeah. know, on the other side of your head. Yeah. Other side. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. The, the, the belt is <laughs> I see him in the back. Yeah. yeah so I got mm -hmm. a figure. I got, I got three action figures now. So it's kind of cool. And people with tattoos of, of, uh, of me and of my characters on their body, which is crazy. So that's, yeah. it's an honor. Yeah. It is. It's pretty and great. it's an honor for you guys to think of me to have you on your show. And I appreciate it, you know? And... No, it's, it's yeah. honor that you chose to come on with us. I mean, that's pretty great. We appreciate no, I, that. I do. I mean, you know, and meeting you at the convention, you know, mm -hmm. you know, you're, you're Kevin. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So I saw Kevin when I, um, when you came to the show and you had your shirt on, that was, that, that really meant a lot. I remember that. I don't forget that. I have it. I have that photo somewhere. I posted it all over. Right. My I was like the first post on your Instagram. I'm like, 
I don't. Yeah, I'm not a social media guy. So yeah, how many followers you have? Like two. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't have many. Facebook, I'm maxed out on. I, I'm an old school guy, so that. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, um, I'm blessed, and thanks for having me, for sure. Yeah. All right, we just have to do our issue ranking left. What do we rank this issue? I'm gonna make I'm magically gonna, gonna, delicious. <laughs> magically delicious. Yes, that's the top. T that's the top rank. I'm ranking it magically delicious. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, I don't. I don't know. It's great hanging out with you guys. <laughs> yeah. Well, when you when Drew Fuller inevitably asks you to come on House of Hallowell, you know who to send them to, who to shout out. Words of the witches. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> let's uh, let's hopefully maybe we get to meet up again and let's have a beer. Yeah, for sure. Like that. That'd be great. That. That'd be great yeah. to find you at a convention or something. And yeah, yeah. meet meet at a meet. Hopefully, my fiance with me. She's a cool gal. God bless. So it's good. That's so, great. Yeah, it's funny when we moved in together. Great. I have a cat, right? You know, it's like big, six foot four, two hundred and sixty pound, you know, muscly guy with a cat. You know, it was like a German <laughs> Shepherd or something, right? No, but I have a little... And then she's the one who's got the dog, you know? And so we liked each other, but the deal breaker was going to be, does the cat and the dog get along? Uh -huh. And so and they did. I first come up, come up to the, to her place. And, uh, you know, cause, uh, she says, well, you know, and I said, you know, if this, if this is, you know, work out, I'm just going back to Texas. And, and uh, she, you know, she's a little upset about it. And, I said, so we'll see what happens. So I let the dog cat out of the, the cage and because I drove all the way from Texas to Arkansas to see her and the cat was like, you know, Halloween cat running around and <laughs> hey, you know, whatever. But once the cat realized the dog is just a, you know, a goofy dude and not going to hurt them, they get, you know, they, they you know, they're always going to be cats and dogs, but they chase each other and they have fun. And <laughs> yeah. Like that, but yeah, it's good. So That's so cool. Yay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right i guess um p is for poll this week i'm just gonna have people pick which of their memories from the first page is their favorite out of the bottom three so the honeymoon's over one the power outage one or the merry-go-round one so that'll be the vote for that and i guess all that's left is sean to tell us what's next cool so next we have will of the witch and it looks like i'm scrolling back it's a picture of phoebe a very beautiful picture of phoebe and there's it looks like a witch burning at the stake and it says here after suffering a tragic loss at the hands of an evil older than time itself one of the hollowell sisters takes a trip across the country and crosses paths paths with a will of the wisp however this tortured spirit has much more planned than merely leading its targets astray. That sounds exciting. Ooh, exciting. Will of the Witch. Yeah. yeah. So that's next issue. Coming oh, next we... month. Coming next month. Or next week <laughs> in, the, in our case. Next <laughs> week. Show six, season 10. Yeah. Buckle your seats, baby. <laughs> Beautiful. Cool. Well, we have done this, you guys. We've reached the end. <laughs> so, uh, Michael, where can people follow you? If you're maxed out on Facebook. I am. But you can go <laughs> to other places. <laughs> Always, if you have any questions about Charm, you can email me at mbs at michaelbaileysmith.com. Okay. Email me, you know. Uh, but that's that's always a great place. Um, you know, Facebook, I guess. Uh, I probably should try to go public with that, but I I don't know. I haven't figured that out yet. I'm some of that social media stuff. You could and also you know Instagram and Twitter, so all that yeah. too. But yeah, <laughs> and it's it's great seeing you, Kevin and Mr. Sean as well. It's nice meeting you. And uh, nice meeting you. This was an honor. You guys are like <laughs> two peas in a pod. You guys are really good together. <laughs> That's good. So, <laughs> Thank yeah. you. We even wore the same color. <laughs> we did. We didn't even plan that. <laughs> nope. <laughs> I know. It was pretty cool. 
<laughs> do I get do I got anything here from Charm to show you? Uh, anything cool to show? Ooh. Uh, <laughs> Final show and tell. <laughs> I got. Oh, I can show you this. Uh, this is a little. This is on my. You can see it. This is put together. I have another one of these, but it's got. Wow. So it's got all different things. Like there's. That's so cool. Charmed. There's. You know that this guy. Is, the Grimlock. Yeah. That right there is me and. Uh, uh, Tug, uh, Tim McGraw in a Bud Light commercial. Fun. That right wow. there is from Murphy <laughs> Brown. That's a Murphy Brown. I played a crazy secretary. This is from a TV show called, I mean, a movie called Town and Country. Um, that one is, wait a minute. Uh, I, I can't, I can't, the thing, my computer's too tall. Let me see what else I got. <laughs> oh, this is from, that's a movie called Submerged. That's called, I forgot that's from, that's Merch, maybe. That's right there, me and a monkey. Monkey! Um, yeah, so monkey. that's a movie called <laughs> That's uh, Diagnosis and Murder, all uh, gone. Uh, movie right here, I got the crappy out of me called Bad Guys. That's Seven Days. Uh, that's, uh, what do you call it? That right there is Conan, shot that in Mexico. Oh. Long story there. I'm not going to talk about that one. But, <laughs> um, yeah, there's oh, there's the Fantastic Four way at the top. Oh, yeah, when you're the thing. Yeah. That's so cool. Me. This is that well, I'm in a wife beater. I could barely see it. I wish I could. I could hold it. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do this. I'm going to pull this closer. Aha. Uh -huh. This is how we're going to do this. That's from Star Trek, right there. Yeah. That's from VIP, um, TV show VIP. Remember that with, uh, what's her name? Pamela Anderson. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That one. Um, oh, that's, I forgot this is from. That's from uh, Undisputed, Bing Rams, Wesley Snipes. That's, that's Fantastic Four. And that E jacket, that's me. I played Ben Grimm. That's my actual Letterman jacket. From college. How fun. Eastern nice. Michigan. So he went to Empire State. So same thing. That's the Spy Mate movie. Uh, what else? And I have another, I'm going to show you this other one. All that, if you have some more time. All that. Sure. All that. <laughs> All here. Okay. This one is. Oh. Okay. Uh, this is from a TV show called Fast Lane. So this is right here. Uh, remember um, HBO series a long time ago called Not Necessarily the News? Oh. And it was a promo, promo commercial for a spoof of a TV show called uh, Flash. And so it was okay. me and this really hot chick. I'm dressed as Flash laying in bed together. And I go, I, I go, uh, what I, what I, was, I go, I go, wow, that was really good for me. How was it for you? And she goes, well, it was over kind of fast, and she and he goes, he smiles, and all she takes off and comes back. How was it this time? She's like, what? <laughs> this is from a uh, uh, movie called Bloodshot. That's the one where I bit that guy in the neck. The vampire uh, movie. From, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, this is from Between Brothers. So that one. This is from uh, oh, uh, Men in Black Two. <laughs> uh, so this is from fun. oh, guess who that is? Historic, right there. Right there, hit the see the nose. That look familiar at all? Governor Jesse, the body, Ventura. Oh my and god. Then, oh we yeah, so me uh, uh -huh. and Renegade. We were we were the we played but the Butler brothers. Wow. This is uh That's Philly, nice. TV show Philly. Uh this is my first movie Freddy. ever. Yeah. Faster than a master man. Yeah. Super Freddy. <laughs> and uh this is from uh I don't know what that's this is from Master of Disguise. Yes. Uh, this is a movie called Cyborg 3. This is uh, that one right there. The next one over is... Where is that one from? Oh, uh, Silk Stockings. Anyway, there's tons of them. I can keep going. That's pretty amazing. That's that's so that's cool. cool. And, yeah, yeah. I've, I've, done, I've done like what, six... I've done like over 100... I have over, over 100 and some odd credits. Um like and it's funny because my me and my gal, um, 
she she doesn't know any of my work and so i've been kind of introduced her to some of the stuff and it's kind of funny to be able to to uh show her some of this stuff and what's funny when we were watching hills have eyes and you know that's pretty intense and she'd look at me like oh, and then look back at me and go, it's a movie come on you know <laughs> that's not how i really am <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I know. I'd like explain to her, so it's pretty yeah. Cool. But just like you, you even jumped at the old movie too. Cause like I wasn't in that part. <laughs> like <laughs> that is true. I, yeah. That is true. I'm like, yeah. My, I told you that. I think I was in it. I went to the premiere of The Hills Have Eyes. I'm sitting there, and I was like, oh gosh. And the guy next to me goes, dude, you're in the movie, not that part. <laughs> you know. So that's, <laughs> yeah. That's how it was. I, I'm not a big horror fan. I, I, I watch them sometimes. You know, but uh, yeah, yeah, it's pretty crazy. You know, it's funny that with the the hills have eyes. We had to go. F I we could talk forever. I mean, it's <laughs> just uh, I'll be quiet. It's pretty amazing. No, it's pretty amazing. That's great. I love that you're excited. That makes me happy. <laughs> no, I, I love it. I mean, I I so um and I you know it's it's so it's like anything in this life, right? So you know, like you know. You, like I tell my sons, you know, I have two sons and they're doing really great. Uh, one was an army ranger, special operations guy deployed in Afghanistan, Iraq. And now he's playing football at central Michigan. He wants to be, uh, he's going to be a football strength coach. Is what his goal. My younger one's working at Amazon. Uh, and he's going to be a, he wants to still stay in, uh, wants to be an athletic director in high school and things like that. And I just told him, I said, listen, I said, the key to, the key to, to the, to being successful in this world, it's just do a little bit more than you're asked of. It, that's all you need to do. You don't have to do it. Just most people do enough just to get by. They do. And they just flow through life. And what happens is that you'll end up dying and yeah, hopefully someone will leave some flowers at your grave, whatever, but that's it. If you do a little bit more than you're asked, guess what's going to happen? You're, you're the people that you work for are going to like, yeah, hey, that's pretty guys, pretty good. You know, and and do it to the best of your ability. You might not be the you might be the greatest, but do the best of your ability. If you do that, yeah. things will happen. People will notice you. You'll get promotions. You'll get this, and other opportunities will open up to drive you in different directions. It's it's happened to me in my life. I mean, the whole way. I, I it was an accident for me to even get into this. You know, my, in as an actor. You know, but I I took a I took a chance and went with a friend of mine to an audition. You know, and he said, hey, maybe you can audition too, and. The casting director asked me was for Nightmare on Elm Street. Do you want to audition? And I could have said no. Now nah, I want to do it. I said, and I've never gotten in front of anybody and spoken before. I was always afraid. Yeah. So I said yes, and I went in. They asked me if we laugh like Freddy Krueger. And I laughed. I said, screw it. I'm laughing like big, a big, big freaking laugh. And they said, that's fucking awesome. Guess what? You've got yourself a job. And that's kind of that's how it happened. Mm -hmm. And so, and I just tried to do a little bit better, you know, than than you know than I. And just things happen. Be great to work with. Be gracious. Be happy. Freaking, you're still breathing. You know, I think Kevin, I told you like a year and a half ago, I had a pulmonary embolism in both my lungs. I was right. not supposed to. I was not supposed to survive that, and I did. Let me tell you, it's a blessing every day to wake up and you know you're still breathing. So you guys are young, so you got your whole life ahead of you. But still, <laughs> I mean, that shit can go away in two seconds. So, it's true. Yeah. Yeah. All good stuff. The good. Man. No, thank you, thank you. This was awesome. Cool man. And and and, yeah. and, and, and and Kevin, where do you where do you where are you based out of? I'm in Milwaukee. So okay. And what about you, Mr. Sean? Where are you from? I'm you over in LA in Lawndale. Lawndale. Okay. No, that's Lawndale. Good. 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 <laughs> do you guys ever get together at all? Oh, uh, we just have once so far. Uh, we're gonna, <laughs> just once, but I'm coming back in July. We're gonna, I'm gonna come visit in July. So are you, you're going to Longdale? Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. if you guys are ever in Arkansas in the Bentonville Rogers area, dude, Mikasa Sukasa, you come hang out awesome. with me. You come to the house. My my gal makes the best old fashions. If you like drinks, okay. uh, we, have, we can go to. I'll take you to the uh, the sushi place. We'll go to this place. I know it's it's a. Uh, um, it's a, it's a chain, but man, it's great. It's this old, old Chicago pizza, man. Go there. Great nice. drinks, great beers, great atmosphere was chill. And 
That'd be great. Talk it up about uh, Charm and, and everything like that. It'd be cool. Yeah, I'll hit you up. That'd be, That'd be amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <stop on>. yeah. <laughs> guys are guys are always welcome anytime. Yay. <laughs> Good. All right. Yay. <laughs> Sean, tell people where they can follow you. Uh, you so, can yeah. follow me on Sean Fret on Instagram. You can find me on uh, Marvelous Galaxy of Disney. Or we just did our last episode of Once Upon a Cult this week, where we look back on the whole series. Are my books on Amazon? A Witch's Brew, A Dream of Waking. Yeah, cool. Uh, you can follow this podcast at Words of the Witches, all the places, except for Twitter, where that's Words of Witches, a little bit different. Um, be sure to rate and review on Apple and Spotify. You can follow my personal Instagram at kgz87 if you feel like doing that. That's just all random wild card stuff. Uh, <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, we'll see you next week for Willow the Witch. <laughs> Thanks for listening. So, Willow the Witch. Yes. Willow, Willow the Witch. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you, Michael, for joining thank, us again. Thank you, Kevin. Appreciate you. Thanks for inviting me. I didn't, I didn't know what I was going to get myself into. I was like, <laughs> what is this hokey pokey? <laughs> I get people in this, in this, this part's. I wish I could help everybody out. I really do. I wish I could give everybody like millions of dollars. I get asked all the time, hey, hey I'm sick. Can you give me a thousand dollars to pay my, I, I can't do that. I, I can't, there's things I can't do. I just can't, right? I, I can give my time, but I'm not giving you my money, you know? And, and, <laughs> yeah. and it's, and it's, uh, or I'm, there's other things I, I just, but I'll give you my time, you know, and things like that. And uh, I get asked all, and I, yeah, I remember this one, the one gal, she said, are you a Christian? And I said, yes, I am. And she goes, will you pray with me? I said, okay, well, I'm not doing this over the phone. This is starting to get a little weird. I don't want, you know, it starts getting kind of weird for me. Come get your spidey sense up, right? Like, oh, okay, whatever. And then, uh, and then, uh, you know, I said, no, nah, I'm, I'm not going to do that. And then she started dropping F-bombs on me. I said, well, I guess so much for the Christianity wow. that's going on. <laughs> Yeah. Same thing. Some chick from South Africa said she need her kids are have cancer and they and they, they need. Can you send me like ten thousand dollars? And I said I I said no. She goes, you can afford it. I said I said, if affording or not affording, I'm saying ten thousand. Then she like dropped like serious head bombs on me and everything else and condemned me to hell and all that. You know. Yeah. So, yeah. It's pretty. But I, I I like doing stuff like this and so and I but I didn't know what to get it myself too. But you know. Kevin, he's a good dude. So, and Rich John, you. you're a good dude. So, yeah. Yay! Thank so, you. Yay! <laughs> We're friends. We're friends now. <laughs> right. Sushi with Belt is well, My mother just called me. Uh, <laughs> okay. I checked on me. Yeah, yeah. it's so. My mother's like, you know, see, you know, especially like when. You know, things are going really popping as an actor, and I was winning awards and things like that. And she goes, "You know what? You still answer to me. You know, you uh, uh, you're, if you come over, how you're still going to take out the trash?" I said, "I know, Mom. It's okay." <laughs> so, she puts me in check pretty well, so my mom's pretty cool. So yeah, so. yeah. She's eighty five, and she's still kicking. So my dad's eighty. My, no, my mom's eighty four. My dad's eighty five. So pretty blessed. Nice. Good. All right. That's good. Enough, enough jabbering. Well, let you go. Yeah, your destiny still awaits, Michael Bailey Smith. Yes. <laughs> hey, and uh, listen, listen. Uh, you know, uh, are we off the air? No. Not yet. I can push pause. I can stop. Yeah.